topic and it's it's a question in some ways you can ask yourself like how do I fool myself or how do we fool ourselves and I've been um this is based off a of personal inquiry like my own like looking at my own life and really you know we were talking about intention you know looking at the gap between where I really am and where I intend to be or intended to be like where I am right now and where I intend to be in every facet, in every area of life. And just asking these inquiry questions, not with judgment, like not judging myself, but just like looking at it from curiosity, like, where I am right now, 46-year-old man, like, is this where I intended to be? And in every aspect, too. So, like, in my physical health, like, is this where I intended to be? I was having a conversation with, uh, I believe it was my barber. Shout out to him if he's listening. And we were just talking about the pandemic. And I was like, man, there was something about the pandemic that had me on top of my game, like my physical health. It was like almost like the, the constant threat in the space of illness, sickness. You get where I'm going? Like it had you, like there was a different level of rigor. The intermittent fasting, you know, drinking tea every evening, in the gym like a beast. Like, like in the gym like a beast. Um, especially after I read an article that stated that cardiovascular, like cardio exercise combined with strength training, like lowered your chance of, of viral infections, right? So the COVID was a viral infection by 67%. I was like, oh, right? Told my wife, we got to stay on top of it. I mean, just everything, just on a whole different level. I'm going to use this as the example to go into how we fool ourselves, right, Um, on a personal level. Um, Over the past week, I was sharing this with a few people yesterday. Over the past week, over the past couple of weeks, I've been in routine. What I mean by in routine, I did everything that I'm committed to. It was the way I did it that I began to evaluate. Let's talk about the gym. Go to the gym in the morning. Um, You know, five, get up at five o'clock. That's the commitment. Get to the gym. And first thing I do is I play ball. And as I was evaluating how I was hitting the gym, like previous to this past week, the week, the couple of weeks before that, I was on autopilot, like, and I didn't really notice it. And I went inside, I played ball. I didn't really play that hard, you know. Somebody played great D. I just kind of ah passed the ball, right? I'm not going. So then I started getting off on passing, right? So I, I justified it. I justified the way, like ah, I don't want to play hard, so I was. I started putting focus on my passing. Hey, bro, I got six assists, seven assists, right? And, and, and not that it's about shooting, right? But it was just I didn't make an effort. <laughs> I didn't make an effort, right? This was going on over the last two weeks. And there was no question in my mind about my workout. You know, the same thing, you know, do your reps. You do your reps. Ah, you know, today was a good day. That last two that I couldn't do, 
You look at the time, right? You know, I'm I'm good, and plus the commitment is to be on time. So we we'll justify it. Well, I'll justify like not finishing that last, like the last two reps. Like I got to supposed to go to twelve, I got to ten. I got to get out of here. This has been like you know. So this is the last couple of weeks. Again, the topic is how we fool ourselves. So my story was, you know. I'm handling my commitments, doing what I say I'm going to do. Um, you know, no big deal. Everything's cool. I was a little annoyed. Some of the games we lost. You know, I don't like losing. I was on a losing streak. But I let it go. I literally like, ah. Sometimes what we need is a wake-up call. Consider today's show that wake-up call. Like, if, if you consider yourself a lion and maybe you haven't really checked in on whether or not you're sleeping, right? Because here's the thing about a lion. Like, a lion, it can get tired in the middle of the jungle. I mean, who's going to come and get them? <laughs> like, think about that. Like, for the folks on, in the, you know, you're at the top of your game. You're one of the best. Like, you, if, if every now and then... You actually need somebody to call you out. I'm calling you out. Like, how, how awake are you? Because, again, you know, like, you know, lions sleep most of the day because they can. They can. Like, who's going to run up on a lion? Who's going <laughs> to surprise a lion? But... If you happen to wake a lion, like if you happen to be the dummy, (laughs) right, that wakes a lion up, typically they wake up mad. And I want to wake you up. I want to wake you up. Maybe you don't consider yourself a lion. That's okay. I still want to wake you up. But there's some of us out there, like we're at the top of our game. We're at the top of our circles. We're the smartest one in the room. We're the boss all the time. And we're still fooling ourselves. Like there's another level. There's always another level. Then there's some of us where we've never been the smartest one in the circle. We've never been the one who is like leading everything in the room. And so what happens is we begin to tell ourselves a story the other way. Well, it's okay. You know, I'm not like them. I mean, I I can't expect that of myself. And so we trap ourselves in that story. The line is saying, ain't nobody going to catch me. And let's call this other person the antelope is saying, you know, I'll never be as fierce as a lion. And the problem is we live within the stories that we tell ourselves. So anyway, back to me. So I'm I'm on autopilot. I'm on autopilot at the gym. I'm getting into the office. I'm doing the things that, you know, I'm going down the list. And I'm keeping my commitments, by the way. I'm keeping my commitments. Something happened Wednesday. One of the brothers I play with, towards the end, we played three games. And and Wednesday, I missed every shot I took. But mind you, and I'm using this as as an analogy, right? Because the Linnell that's awoke would be like, what's going on, right? I would even sub myself out and shoot on the sideline. Be like, I'm coming back in at 10. Like, when y'all get 10 more, like, 10 on each side. Like, I'm coming back in. But I'm not doing it. It's, it's cool. I'm just deferring. Then one of the guys started talking. Yeah, man, because, you know, you ain't got no game. You ain't. And I started notice I'm having an emotional reaction to this. Then in one possession, they passed me the ball in the post, and he bumping me hard. He talking the whole time. 
And all of a sudden, I want to assert myself. But mind you, I ain't asserted myself in two weeks. Right? This is the problem. Now I want to assert myself. But, you know, you wake up stiff. I don't know about y'all, but when you first wake up, you know, you wake up stiff. How are you going to assert yourself? You just woke up. So you know what happens. I go in. I do the half spin move. Come back. Mm, think I got it. He blocks my shot. And he starts talking more. And he's woofing now. I'm emotional. I'm emotional. I'm emotional. I'm like, okay. Woo! I'm not used to that. <laughs> I'm not used to that. And so I want to turn it up, but I've been asleep. And I'm using this analogy for life. You can look at every category of your life. Relationship, are you asleep? Career, are you asleep? Money, are you asleep? Purpose, are you asleep? Spiritually, are you asleep? Needless to say, I can't make an impact. I can't, as, as, as mad as I am, I've been asleep so long, like just, you know, hooping on autopilot two weeks, game ends. I can't even remember if we won or lost because – I was just like, I was, I was like, I was there. I was like, okay, man, did this just happen? And if you don't know already, guy, you, you got to know I'm competitive. Hey, all day Wednesday, I couldn't think about anything else. And then I'm looking at everything in my life at this point, because this is how, this is how my mind works. You get where I'm going? Like, Where else are you allowing this to happen where somebody can just come in and dominate you? You all know I use the four pillars of life as as a framework in coaching, but also a framework for my life. In my finances, I'm like, man, yeah, you know what? I've been thinking about some of the things that I need to do with my money because we know what's going on. Right. Okay, I made some moves, but have I been really making the moves that I need to make, like really assessing some things like, you know, moving money here, putting this money there. Or am I just just kind of going through the motions? So financially, even in the work that I'm doing, I'm like, man, you, you know, where things are, am I doing the right work or am I taking in? I just had this uh, this conversation with someone else like, you know, maybe I hit my number for 2023. And the remainder of the year after September, I'm booked through September, I need to be doing something else. Like, what's that? Am I finishing the book, writing a book? Like, what am I doing? Am I, am I on autopilot? Because sometimes, and this is what I mean by those of us that are lions, like, we're getting the kill so easily that then we start thinking that that's just the game. What else am I supposed to be doing? Purpose. Okay, you know your purpose. You're living aligned with your purpose. But are you digging into the core of that? Like, is like really seeking the next level or just, ah, this is good. This is where I'm supposed to be. And see, the thing is, and I, I experienced this on the court Wednesday, when you're not intentionally making progress, you digress. It's just how it is. I'm thinking about this. You know, and it's about, it's about basketball, but then it's about life. It's about life. So I'm upset Wednesday. I'm upset Thursday. And now it's on my mind. We play again Friday. We play again Friday. Okay. How do, like, when, when I'm being intentional, when I intend to be powerful in my life, how am I showing up? Because now it's different. Now I'm like, did I get my shake? <laughs> right? And I really want you all just to look at the, the parallels for your own life. Like, even in my relationship, my wife and I, We've had 
a lot of blessings, a lot happening. And in the midst of that, there's certain core elements in the relationship where I'm like, we got to do better. Right? My wife and I talked about it. We just got to do better. We just got to do better. Because when you're winning, you know, a lot of times you're like, but we're good. But Finn said it yesterday at his book signing. If you didn't, if you didn't make it, well, you missed a good time. But he said it yesterday, right? Like often what will happen is we'll just we'll focus on the wrong things. I'm going to talk about this book sign at the top of the hour. I want to stick with this thought right now. So Wednesday, Thursday, I'm in my head. I'm thinking about this. And I'm looking at my entire life. I'm looking at everything. Like, okay. Yeah, you've been, it's, it's been sweet. You're on autopilot. It's been sweet. And I'm thinking about, like, I mean, think about our way of being in the pandemic, many of us. Like we were, there's something about being on edge that makes you better. Like in a health, like I'm, I'm not talking about an unhealthy edge. I'm talking about a healthy edge that just makes you better. So I'm reevaluating. I'm reevaluating everything. Even spiritually, I'm like, okay. Like what, what are the shifts that need to be made? But then again, I'm like, but it starts it starts Friday morning. I get to the gym Friday morning, just a little earlier, because I noticed I wasn't getting there to get the, the shoot around. I mean, this is what happens in life. I, I'm using this. I really want you to get, you know, you know, well, maybe I wouldn't hit my shots because I wasn't shooting around. Like simple things, like things we know how to do. Maybe your finances are out of order because you're not looking at the checkbook. You're not looking at the ledger. Simple. Simple. Like, you, like, we know that. You know, maybe the money keeps escaping your, your bank account because you just don't, you don't open up the statement and just say, where am I at this month? It's real simple. <laughs> How much money did I spend this month, this week? Real simple things, right? Real basic. You know how to do this. It's not rocket science. We just don't. We, we just don't. We get, get on autopilot. And this is how, if you're not a lion, so you can go on autopilot when you got millions in the bank. You're like, oh, did I? Did I just waste a, a few million dollars? Right? But you got 100 million. You know, you know, that's what I mean. You know, the lion can sleep. But financially, are you a lion? When I'm on safari, when I'm on safari, you see the antelope. The springbok, the springbok can't hardly drink water without looking up. Those of you on Facebook, you see me. Those of you in the radio land, just imagine the antelope, right? They take two sips of water. Look up. Right? Hey, if you broke right now, you should be a springbok. Every time you spin, you should be back in your account. Okay, how much I got? What's, what, what do I have saved? Right? You can't act like a lion. This economy will take you out. You'll be a carcass. Springbok. What's going on? What's happening? Then, <laughs> right? Do I even do I smell financial disaster? You can't watch a lion and, and, and try to predict how you should move if you're a springbok, and you just gotta know where you are. Some of us in our health, you're not a lion. You're, you're a springbok. You should be watching every label. What's on the back end? What's in this? You know, you already said I'm pre-diabetic, so I got to be on top of it. You can't. You don't have time to be on autopilot, but this is it's what we do. The brother who was talking to me Wednesday, see, he's been playing with me for years. So I'm sure he got home and he said, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think I might have poked him. <laughs> right? So he comes right up to me. Hey, man, you know I love you. You know it's all on the court, bruh. 
you know, you know, I love you right now when we get on the court. You know, then it's that. And then after we play, I love you again. I said, remember that because I love you too right now. But you're sticking me again today, right? And he just had, you know how somebody had that look like, oh, boy. I said, you're sticking me. I'm like, everybody, he's sticking me today. One of my other guys said, I'm playing with L. <laughs> I already know what's about to happen, right? But see, this is what happens when you wake up. Like, and, and by the way, I didn't even question, you know, am I going to make the shot? Like, because you got to remember, it's about mindset. We know that. All of it. But I don't know if I can lose weight. If you get your mind right, you can. If you get, like, if you really, if you really, really get present to what you can be, you can. I think about this going this going to be triggering. I think about big men. Big men. I'm talking to the brothers now, 64 65 66. Justin, where you at? 66 66. I'm talking about you, Joe. I'm talking you about to be mad at me, bro. I'm sorry. It's with love, though. It's with love. I think about the big man, naturally strong. See, me, man, I'm six feet. If I don't lift weights, I'll be 185 pounds. You get where I'm going? I got to get in the gym to keep this 15 on so I can be 195. You know what I mean? Like, I got I to gotta go hard. You know, short man, it's a brother who plays with us, about five, six. You get to the gym, he's already there. He's already squatting in the weight room. He knows he's got to be strong. You get what I mean? He knows. But see, this is what happens. You know, beautiful women, listen. You know you're fine. You know it. This is what happens. You know, but, you know, you, because you're fine, you don't conduct yourself in certain ways. You, you push the envelope because people just kind of, they let you by. Because yeah, this, is, this, is this is societal norms. And then this is how we fool ourselves, you know. Well, you know, I'll be fine. My husband will stay with me. I'm beautiful. You know, he be a fool. I don't know. There's a sister out there who would, who would do it all, just like my bro, you know, squatting before ball, lifting before we play, coming down. And he's already in the gym. Like, we start at 5, 530. He's there by 450. See, my brick brothers, you, you, you know, you're naturally strong. Go to the gym, I'm good. Somebody run up on me, right? I'm a lion. Oh, hold on now. Remember what I said when you sleep too long. Remember what I said when you sleep too long? Somebody run up on you, you be, oh, wait a second. I thought I could, whoa. Did he get me? Like I said, bro, five, six is in the gym working hard. He's ready for you. Are you ready? And this is, I'm not endorsing, you guys know I'm not endorsing physical conflicts and violence. It's a mentality. It's a ready mentality. You follow me, bro, with love. You follow me? Like, are you for real ready right now in this moment? Just shake your head. I mean, for real, at, at what you know you can be. I'm, I'm talking about what Justin can be. Top, top notch. That's what I'm talking about. Like, top notch. You get where I'm going? Top notch. If I was like, hey, bro, let's go run after this, you like, Let's make it happen. I'm 46. Hey, 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 with love, right? Because, Justin, you're representing a lot of, uh, a lot of us. We're just like, it's good. It's all good. How am I fooling myself? Financially, 
in relationship. Professionally, some of us, the pandemic came, we've been working from home, we've been on autopilot. The boss is like, I need such and such. You'll get it. You know, you get around to it. You're sitting at home watching Jerry Springer re- re- reruns. You know, I'll just an ode to Jerry. An ode to Jerry. You got work to do. Layoffs are coming. See, here's what happens. Then it's like, you see an article, I need to step it up. Why wait? Like, bring your best right now. How we fool ourselves. Why wait? Because here's the thing. That right there was a feel-good message, right? Inspirational. Motivational. And I know what happens. I know what happens. Justin, if I'm you right now, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't like how L just did that. I don't like that. You know what? Okay. I'm, uh, I'm about to make a move. Right? It's like, I'm going to make a move. See, we, so we get inspired. There's some, some level of motivation. I mean, did, did that do that to you a little bit? Were you like, man, he just called me out. And then I had to say, no, I'm not at my potential. Like, I'm not, I'm not as cold as I could be. Because you could be a beast. You could be a beast. You used to hoop. You, you could be a beast. Right, but it's you leaving it on the table. I'm just saying you leaving it on the table, right? Yeah, you know, I got children to take care of. You know, we we justify it. That's what I want to talk about because that's what you're gonna deal with Monday. That's what you're gonna deal with tomorrow. Ooh, coach was getting in it. Oh, it was good Sunday. Yeah, okay, but then what you gonna do tomorrow? And I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna be so difficult to stay motivated to stay inspired because what happens is we start fooling ourselves again. We start deferring again. See, cause Monday I could show up and say, well, I showed them Friday. They don't want, he don't want no smoke. By the way, by the third game, he came off me. No, by the second game, it didn't even take three games. Second game, he came off me. I said, where you going, bro? Where you going, man? It's all good. I'm like, no, it's not. Come back. Get some more of this. Right? He came off me, put somebody put somebody else on me. <laughs> you get my point? So now Monday, I can come in and go, all right. This is what, this is what happens. I don't got to work that hard. You know, I, I prove my point, right? I can go another two weeks. Maybe in this case, because I, I was woofing Friday, I probably can go another three months before he say something else to me. God, like, I ain't leave the brother alone. No. So this is what we do. We have a win, and we go, <sighs> I got Kobe's book, The Mamba Mentality. Some time ago, I was reading it. I read it again after he passed away. When Kobe retired, they asked him, so you going to get some rest now? (laughs) You know, because his work ethic was next level. You don't, somebody doesn't become a demigod just by deferring. Uh Right? You don't, you, don't, you don't become great just by being like, it'll be okay. It's fine, you know. It's, it's, it's cool. It, it, it'll work itself out. You, you, don't, you don't become that. This brother said, God help me. This brother said, he was up for retirement. Kobe says, what do you mean? It's a transition. I'm not stopping. I'm just transitioning. Why would I? Why would I rest? And I want you to get the point. It's not like the man didn't go to sleep. It's not like he didn't take care of himself, right? You can't perform at that level and not rest. 
when I'm talking about like recuperate, like do what's necessary. But in terms of my commitments, like am I still going to get up and go to the gym? He was looking at them like they were crazy. Like, you're really asking me that? Just because I retired? Because here's the thing, you know, you know what Kobe knows that they don't know? Somebody's always going to call him out. Just because he left the game don't mean somebody ain't going to say. I was reading another article. I apologize for you who don't follow basketball, but I'm just, this is what inspires me, right? This is my authentic self. I was reading another article about Michael Jordan and how Michael Beasley, supposedly the guy who was whipping everybody one-on-one, young guy, whooping everybody one-on-one. He goes to play Mike. Mike is 50. <laughs> Mike is 50 years old at the time. He goes to play Mike. When I say he was beating everyone, he beat Le- LeBron James one-on-one. LeBron couldn't do nothing with him. He goes to Mike. Mike's 50 years old. Gives him that work. Gives him that. See, it's a different. You got to understand. It's not Mike's age. It's his mentality. It's his mentality. I'm so convinced. I'm sure. See, these are things you don't see from the lion. I'm sure after that, Mike went, put the ice on the knees like, whoo, right? But when the knee was groaning while he was playing, he ignored it. Because I got to win. I'm going to win. Like, what if you had that mentality about your life? Physical health? You won't beat me. Like, I am going to figure this out to be my absolute best. We're going to talk about why we don't in the next hour. Busyness, you won't defeat me. Like, I'm going to be the, my best in, in the relationships that matter to me. I'm calling myself out. I said it. Work? Yeah, I've been on autopilot. See, this is what happens when you get paid. Like, you're not bringing your best. I can't tell you how many people who have trans, transitioned to entrepreneurship, they're like, why am I not doing what I know I'm supposed to do? Because you picked the habit up in when you were working for someone else. You were deferring. I want to talk about one of the number one ways that we fool ourselves. First, first hour I spent hopefully waking us up. Y'all feel woke? Y'all feel woke? Now I want to talk about how we go to sleep. See, because in order to stay awake, you have to know what will lull you to sleep. And I want to talk about attachments. And in this case, I'm not talking about relationship attachments. If you, if you understand psychology, they talk about the four type of relationship attachments, right? This is one of the reasons why some of us struggle in relationship. Because mama and daddy didn't care for us the way they should have. There's there's lots of reasons for that. Maybe mama had to work. Maybe mama was too busy, but for some reason, you learned that the world wasn't safe because she didn't create that safety and predictability. And the ages zero to three, a child really needs that, especially zero to two in terms of relationship attachment. So when I say attachment, anyone, any professional, psych, psych, Psych- psychologist, therapist, et cetera, they'll say, oh, he must mean relationship attachment. And I don't want to talk about that today. When I say attachment, I'm talking about mental attachments. Mental attachments. Attachments you have to stories. And that's all they are. They're stories. There's nothing true about it. It's a story you told yourself. Well, you know, I got to always be ready if he leaves me. 
So you never give yourself fully to the relationship, wholly to the relationship, 100% to building as a team. Like, because if, you know, if he leaves, and it's a story, and you're so attached to the story, you can't attach to your spouse. And what that does is it annihilates the possibility of the relationship, the potential that you all could build. See, I told you I was going to get to it. This is how we fool ourselves. And then what we'll say is the problem's over there. The problem's over there all the time. You're telling yourself a story. You're justifying the story and you're creating the possibility of the story in your head because of your attachment to the story. Maybe you learned it from a friend. Maybe you learned it watching your parents' marriage. But now you're attached to it. You're so attached to it, you can't let go. And so, very subtly, their behaviors, their ways of being, that you align in your relationship as a result of that. And this is how you fool yourself. You know, well, I I give everything I can, but do you? Some of us got attachments to food. Y'all said it. You're attached. The story you tell yourself is, I'll do better. How many people eat sweets and say this the last time? I mean, it's a... You know, matter of fact, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take half. I'm just going to take half. Oh, you, you, you take a half of a thousand calories. Now it's 500. Well, but, but you're telling yourself that this is a good thing. You're telling yourself it's okay. This is how we fool ourselves. And, and by the way, we're attached. We're attached to the story. You got a lot of. A lot of us, we're attached to sports, brothers. You can't even stay home and be with your family. It's the playoffs. I'm going there today. I'm going there today. Like the same brother that would say, family first. Family first. You're so attached to the playoffs. You're so attached to sports. Family comes second, third, fourth to that. Well, you know, Bay, it's Sunday. Honey, you know, I wanted us to. Well, you know, Bay, it's, it's Sunday. It, football. Don't, don't mess with my football. Right? And by the way, we enroll other people in these attachments, in these stories. And you can't tell me I'm not a good man. I'm at home. You can't tell me. That I'm not a good father, I'm here. And I'm not saying you're not a good father. I'm not saying you, you're not a good man. But I'm just curious about the potential you have as a man. The potential you have as a father. What's, what's being left on the table, brother? What's being left on the table? Like this, this is the questions I was asking myself towards the end of the week. What's being, I'm just, now I'm just making my thoughts public. What's being left on the table? Hey, look how we justified FanDuel. Years ago, if you talked about gambling all day, every day, brothers would say, you got a problem. Hey, bro. You might need to slow down. You got a problem. But, look, but they normalized it. So now we tell ourselves a story because Kenny Smith told me his bets. I should be able to make mine. I mean, because he does it, right? Don't be foolish. You think he's betting with his money? Don't be foolish. You, you know he has a, a contract. Behind the scenes, like, don't be foolish. Why well, I see them talk about their numbers and what they're going to do. We're going to have a fan duel break. Like, it's normalized. What's your financial potential if you weren't gambling? Oh, well, it ain't me, bro. I'm up. 
I'm up 2,000. Oh, how much could you be up in life if you were focused on the books? If you were focused on the betting book, I'm sorry, if you were focused on life, like you're focused on the betting book. Like, if you were focused on the game of life, like you're focused on the upcoming game. Game seven today. Game seven today. You got people right now looking at the lines. Who's injured? Who's questionable? Who I'm mean, who you taking? The Warriors or the Kings? How about you take yourself? Keep your money in your pocket. How about you reinvest that time into growing yourself mentally, growing yourself spiritually? I don't have time to work out, but you'll sit on the phone and look at the lines for 30 minutes. Oh, I don't have time for that. What if you invested that same time that you put in the betting book in the gym? I'm just saying. We're leaving it, but we fool ourselves. We fool ourselves. And all I'm asking is, are you the best you can possibly be? Are you the absolute best you can possibly be? And the reason we're not is because we tell ourselves stories. You know, after, you know, after uh, NBA playoffs and I'm done with FanDuel. You know, this is it. If you're done, be done today. No moment like right now to change it all up. See, because if you can do it now, you can definitely do it in September, October. <laughs> Man, I was thinking about this. What's my attachment to Chicago? Like, I was just thinking about it. We travel around. Where you from? Chicago. We say, we say Chicago with such pride, those of us who are from Chicago. Am I lying? We say it with such pride. I'm, man, I want to look. When I tell you I looked everywhere, I looked everywhere. Where you from? Chicago. Ain't nothing like a Chicago player, you know. Ain't nothing like a like black man from Chicago. Like, we all agree, ain't nothing like a black man from Chicago. Just a different swag, you know what I'm saying? It's an attachment, though. It's a story. Like, who, how is it true? Right? Now, I like the story. Don't get me wrong. The story fits. It's fitting. But it's an attachment. It's a story. Am I so attached that if the creator began to lead me to move, I couldn't. You know, in my case, we got family, support, all those things. But even then, maybe we should all go. I was thinking about the state of the United States as it is right now. If it came down to having to pick up and move. See, we romanticize some of us about Africa. We've been there. But would you actually do it? How attached are you? How would that, that man? That's what's going on for me. Like, where am I fooling myself? Like, is this really the best that I have to offer my family? Is this really the the apex of potential? Am I willing to look at it? Am I willing to to really investigate it? Well, Linnell, you just bought a brand new house. Am I attached? Like, how attached am I? How attached? What story am I telling myself? What, what, what am I making the house mean about me? See, that's what happens. The story we tell ourselves about high-end clothes is a story. It, like, it, it, it basically closes the gap about how I really feel about me. But are you willing to look at that? Consider that your spending habit is more than a spending habit. It's a psychological thing. It's a not enough thing. It's a 
compensation thing. I'm compensating for something I believe I don't have, and I haven't really admitted it to myself. And when I admit it to myself, I can begin to grapple with that and then begin to realize that I'm a child of God, which means I am unique. I am special at the very core and begin to create a brand new relationship with myself. But you got to admit the relationship you have today. Like, do you have an empowered relationship with yourself? Or is it disempowered? And that's what's creating the chaos all around you. The chaos in your health. The chaos in your relationships. The drama. Sometimes we keep the drama going so that way we don't have to focus on self. All attachments are connected to stories. What stories are you telling yourself? Like if there is any practice that I can give you over the next week. Because over the next, I'm coming with it for the next few weeks, y'all. I'm telling you. If there's any practice I can give you over the next couple of weeks. It's like really begin to investigate your stories. To investigate your stories. What stories are you telling yourself? I know enough about psychology to be dangerous, right? I'm not a Dr. Jordan Peterson, though. But see, here's, here's the mistake we make. The things I know a little bit about, that's more than most. See, I know more than most. Right. So I know a little bit about it and that little bit, it adds up to more than most. In my family. I'm the only one making this kind of money. Right. So you tell yourself that I see it's more than most. So I'm good. Are you really? <laughs> like stop evaluating and comparing yourself to other people. What's your potential? That's what I'm talking about, right? It's like, is that because we, we get to measuring ourselves against other folks. What does the creator design you to do? Think about that. What are you leaving on the table there? The things I know a little bit about, that's more than most. If I'm not careful, if I'm not careful, see, I'm so good at this other stuff. If I'm not careful, I think I'm just as good over here. And I'll leave it on. I'll leave all kinds of opportunity on the table. All kinds of opportunities on the table. You know, I'm I'm so smart. I should be able to know how to do like I know how to do that. It's like, but do you do you need help? You know, in, in, in my family, I'm not talking about me in particular. I'm just telling stories out here. In my family, ain't nobody, I'm the only entrepreneur. I know more than most. I know more than them. And so it creates a sense of overconfidence. You know, you always helping everybody else. But do you really understand entrepreneurship? And what happens is, like, I don't need no help. I don't need no help. So then when the real expert is talking, I'm doing something else. It's how we fool ourselves. I'm doing something else. Ah, well. It creates overconfidence. And, and the thing is, it's hard to unravel because it's in a story. Stories justify. And stories also nullify objective opinions from the outside. Like they nullify it. There's, there's always a comeback. You ever meet somebody, no matter what, no matter what you say, they got to come back for you. 
No matter what you say, they got to come back. Stories, not, this just means they live in a strong story, that's all. And they're so clear on the story, they got to come back for everything. But what about this? But they don't even hear themselves. Folks like that, I just stopped talking. Okay. This is why being in a conversation with someone other than yourself about yourself is so powerful. Let me tell you something. If you don't have a mentor, if you don't have a coach, if you don't have a therapist, if you don't have somebody, if you don't have somebody that you can be 100% with about you, Consider that you've been fooling yourself. It's just that simple. It's how human psychology works. And you know what's, you know what's scary about that? Is everybody sees it but you. You're great. Don't get me wrong. You're great. You're great. You're an expert at what you do. You're, you're phenomenal. I'm not taking that from you. Matter of fact, I would hire you for what you do. But that don't mean you got it all together. Me included. This is why I'm in constant conversation. With my coach, with my therapist. Hey, here's what happened. I noticed this. Here's what I'm thinking about that. My wife said this. My emotional reaction was that. Right? I'm talking to my coach. I'm talking to my therapist. I'm talking to people who can point out things. Ooh, you see your story about your wife right here, Linnell? And see, if you don't have that, oh, my, consider that you, you've gotten so coiled into your stories that it might be time to unravel them so you can be your best. So you can be your best. They say iron sharpens iron. But when you put the iron together, you notice when you hit it, there's sparks because there's friction. The reason why we avoid these kind of conversations is because they hurt. You mean to tell me I had one of my colleagues as a coach who having a conversation. They unraveled one of my stories. It hurt. It hurt my pride. It hurt my ego. Is that really me? Is that? As he was even sharing, he was like, Linnell, what I'm noticing is you're, you, you know, you're tending to think about this particular incident this way. And it's informing everything you're doing. And I'm looking at it. And I want to be like, no. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Would I do that? Have I have I done that? Wow, I've done that. Then there's an emotional reaction. Whew. Reminds me of my huma- humanity. <laughs> Reminds me of how little I can see when I'm close to the game. Don't fool yourself, man. Don't fool yourself. Just because you're good doesn't mean that you can't be great. And then there's somebody out there that goes, oh, Linnell, but I'm great already. <laughs> then, be, then be excellent. Be incredible. Like, then why settle there if you are great? Maybe you are great. Why settle there? The community needs you to be excellent. The community needs you to be incredible. The story that I'm good enough, I'm good enough. It's good enough. That's a selfish story. That's a selfish, selfish story. Because that means only one person is doing the evaluating. 
Go ask your doctor if it's good enough. <laughs> right? Go take a bio scan, see if it's good enough. I still got work to do there. Try to fast for one day. Tell me if it's good enough. Some of us can't even do that. Oh, I can't. Hey, don't take this the wrong way. You get fasting as a mindset. It's a mindset. Turning down the plate is a mindset. I'm just not going to eat. Like, and you know you're not going to eat. I ain't nothing to do with what's available. I'm just going to allow my body to churn and clean. That's what happens. Allow my body just to process itself and clean. It's a mindset. It's a mindset around, I want to be the best. If you can't do it, consider that you have stories that have you all raveled up. Not allowing you to be your absolute best. Potential left on the table. 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 I'm so serious, man. Like, we, we've, we've created these stories, man. And, hey, look. I get it. I'm going in today. Somebody probably turned the radio off now. This is too much. It's too much. Too much. Coach is doing too much today. I told one brother, I said, you know, he said, man, we're going to talk relationship. I told him I might do it today. He, he might be right now like, oh, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this, Linnell. I didn't sign up for this conversation today. I'll, I'll come back to relationship eventually. See, those are... But those are comments that make us, you know, make us feel good. They're dramatic. It's dramatic. We like drama. We like drama because then we can focus on something else. Is he doing that in his marriage? Is she doing? Are people doing? Like, no, no, let's just talk about us right now. Let's talk about your relationship to yourself, your relationship to reality. Yesterday, <clears throat> at Attorney Finn's book signing, he was talking about money. One of the things he said is that it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. This is a mentality. Like, that's a mentality. Then he went on to say, you can make $50,000 a year. And if you can't keep some of that, then you likely won't keep it if you're making a quarter million. That's hard for people to grasp because, and the reason why <clears throat> is because of the stories we tell ourselves. See, the story is I don't make enough. So then it's not enough. And this is what I'm talking about. And then we get attached to these type of stories. 50000 is not a lot of money. But I believe Fenton would back me up when, when I say this. He's had clients who come, who've come in, and they haven't made more than 50000 and they're wealthy. So that story is not true. 50000 is enough. You just got to unravel your stories. You got to unravel your story that you're not enough, so you need designer clothes. You got to unravel your story that you have to live in an apartment that, is, that costs that much because it's got to look a particular way. You got to unravel your stories. You got to unravel your stories and get present to what it is that you want to create. Problem is, most of us don't want to sacrifice. We don't. That word in itself. We don't want, no, we don't want to sacrifice anything. We only want to sacrifice a meal. Fasting? Did you say fasting? We don't even want to sacrifice a meal. We don't even want to push the plate back one time. Just one time. Can I do it? Ramadan just ended. Not too long ago. My Muslim brothers and sisters, those who align with it, they push their plate away. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Day after day. See, there's something about that. There's something about that. Day after day. 
the ability to do it. Well, I just couldn't do that. Well, that's your story. That's your story. What's the story you're telling yourself? This is a spiritual journey. What story do you tell yourself to get out of that? Like, let's, I mean, let's get to it. What story do you tell yourself to operate outside the reality that you are a spirit occupying a body on a spiritual journey that requires of you that you identify and live the creator's purpose for your life. That's the only reason you breathe. Like, so if you're not focused on that, if you're not focused on that, then what stories are you telling yourself? What could, what story can you put together that nullifies the importance of your being? The very purpose of your being. See, and here's the thing. If I can tell myself a story that nullifies that, I can tell myself a story about anything. I can tell myself a story about anything. But then here's the piece. Here's what I know. You don't have peace. Those stories don't give you peace. Why is that? Your stories don't give you peace. You like your poor, your stories don't ease your anxieties. This is how we know the stories aren't true, by the way, right? Because truth, like real truth, standing in real truth, Like when you know you're standing in real truth, there's a peace to that. The creator will provide for me. Like when you really get that, there's a peace that comes with that. And then when you know you're living in alignment, the best to your knowledge, the best, I ain't saying perfect, perfection, but you're committed and you're aligned. Like there's a peace that comes with that. There's a peace that comes with that. And anything outside of that, you're operating in a story. Well, you know, I mean, you got to make money, Linnell. Okay, well, that's the story then. Well, you know, if I left my job, then I would have no way to take care of myself. Have you ever tested it? I'm not telling folks this to jump and quit, right? I want you to get my point. Somebody's dealing with this right now. So what story do you tell yourself day in and day out? That disconnects you from your spiritual purpose, your reason for being. You ever wonder why you you feel unsettled? It's because the stories don't add up and there's something inside you that knows it. Stories ain't adding up. These stories, these interpretations, these things you tell yourself to make yourself feel better. Last night, I was out with my brother. On the way home, he said, hey, man, stop me. I want to grab something to eat. <clears throat> so we stopped. As we go in, there's a young lady. She says something. Hey, you know, hey. It's sitting in a, like a red Chevy or something. And my brother's, he's like, hey, what's up? I do what I do as a married man. I just, <laughs> right? I walk inside. He orders what he orders. We, When we're leaving, they say something else. Now, right away, I'm looking at these young ladies. High. So high. They were sitting there when we got there. They were sitting there when we left. Just high. Eyes glazed over. And I thought to myself, what are these sisters avoiding? 
Like when you got to get that high, what stories are you telling yourself? Here's the kicker. Anybody that knows me knows I, I got constant, consistent jokes. <laughs> I just do, right? And I engage people. The young lady had the chalk still on the, on the windshield from, from her car being impounded April 7th. So I walk up to the side of the car because, you know, they're talking. I say, hey. When when are you going to be complete with what took place at the pound earlier this month? Oh, you got jokes, (laughs) right? You got jokes. And I'm like, no, I'm just saying. It's the end of the month. You still still have this story, like your story. Like, I know your story. Your car got impounded April 7th. You still have your story on your vehicle. A bad story. You're carrying that story around with you. How do I get it off? You need a razor blade. You got a razor blade. No, ma'am, I don't. Then why are you talking to me about it? You right. Continue. And here's the thing. My brother and I, we got in the truck. We both chuckled. It's funny, right? But it's not. It's not. What that tells me is that you're not on top of your game. What that tells me is that the night you're creating this evening was pretty much the night you had April 7th. And the likelihood that you're in rotation is just going to happen over and over again. The same way we can look at that, the chalk on the car that tells a story about who this young lady is, the driver, and who she's consorting with. Everybody in the car was high. All young ladies. All, you know, my heart, and it, my heart drops, man. All young ladies, attractive young ladies. And when I say attractive, like physically attractive, they can do something like not attractive spiritually, broken spiritually. You can see it. I just thought to myself, man, they're out here smoking away the pain, smoking away the trauma, while the same pain and trauma they're smoking away is likely being recreated for their little ones. Completely recreated for their little ones. It's a cycle. You say, Linnell, how you know they have children? (laughs) <laughs> if you didn't if you didn't scrape the chalk off your car since april 7th i'm quite sure you're not taking other means to make sure you don't have children it's just like ooh, that's judgmental coach no i just see it the way it is here's my point the same way I can see that so clearly. We can see that so clearly. Don't you know other people can see the stories that you tell yourself and you how you operate, they can see it clearly? They see your loose ends. The problem is most of us have put up a self-defense mechanism that doesn't allow anybody to talk about it. You know you're not. You, you know you're not where you should be. You know you, 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 you know you there was a little bit more you could have done that you could do. You know this. But you're not, you're not being honest with yourself. And here's the scary part. Other folks see it too. Like that, that for me is where I'm like, God, help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. me." 
See, because everywhere in my life that I'm fooling myself, the only other way to sum it up is that those are areas, areas of foolishness. There's no, there's, no other way to, there's no other way to sum it up. No matter how wise I might be, no matter how smart and intelligent my, I might be, no matter how brilliant I might be, no matter how charismatic and enchanting I might be, if there are areas in life where I'm fooling myself, then there's places in my life that I'm giving over to foolishness. I'm allowing the story to keep me there. I'm allowing the story to hold me. When I talk about <clears throat> talking about the sisters in the car, let me ask you a different way. Let's use that analogy a different way. Where are you sitting in the car high in your life? Because how I see that is you, you just you're sitting here, you expose, you're exposing yourself, you're showing yourself. Where, where are you doing that in your life, period? Where you're just in a, in a, a routine, a routine. Attachments annihilate possibility. They annihilate, like, think about the word annihilate. Like, uh, they can't even live. There's no possibility of life when something is annihilated. Annihilation. Attachments annihilate, like completely destroy and obliterate. What stories are you attached to? What stories do you have about yourself, about what you can't do? What stories do you have about what you can and can't learn? This is what I mean by they annihilate. They annihilate possibility. These attachments, these stories. Well, you know I'm not that smart. I've never been, I've never been good with numbers. These are all stories. Oh yeah, no, I'm not a I'm not a good writer. I, I don't write. It annihilates possibility. What if your purpose was to write a book? And this book would change lives, but you're caught up in a story about your writing. Well, I, I'm not a good writer. I can't write. It anni- This is what I mean. It annihilates the possibility. It's working with a person, hired me, former client, who had a speaking engagement. And we had to, it's like, I'm shutting down, Linnell. I'm shutting down. Like, I, I need help. Call me at the last minute. One of the first things this person said is, I'm not a good speaker. I said, okay, let's deal with it. Right? Because that it's annihilating the possibility for you to do what it is you called me to do. It's annihilating it, completely destroying and obliterating it before you even get a chance. That's why you're shutting down. Let's deal with the story. We get caught up in these stories. What about in relationship? What story are you telling yourself? What story are you telling yourself about yourself? What story are you telling yourself about your spouse? What story are you telling yourself about your mom, your dad? What story are you telling yourself about your child? See, all these things annihilate possibility. Well, you know, she's good, but she'll never be. You're annihilating possibility. Who are you to say that? Who are you? Reminds me of the story and think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill with his son who was born with no ears. Napoleon would speak over his son's life and say, you will have all the possibilities. 
everything that every human being has. Son had no ears. He dedicated himself to ensuring that his son had possibility. Later in the story, not only did his son have possibility, but he was able to take it to a completely different level. No ears. Taught his son how to hear with vibrations. How many of us would have just said, look what God did. You know, God didn't want him to hear. And just let it go. And what happens is we get enrolled in the story. That's how to be. Then we enroll the child in the story. That's how they'll be. And that story would annihilate all possibility. And my fear is we've allowed stories to come into our lives and annihilate the possibilities and furthermore, the possibility of us truly being our purpose. I grew up in church. They would say, the enemy only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How many of you have heard that before? The enemy only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This is how the enemy does it, though. See, because most of us are looking out for the theft, the taking of life, and destruction. But that's not how the enemy works. The enemy works in a story. Tells you a story. He tells you a story, and then the story does the killing. The story does the stealing, stealing potential. The story does the destroy. And then the story creates attachments. What are you attached to? What are you attached to? Some of us are attached to our jobs. There's a story there. Some of us are attached to being broke. Whoo! See, like people get mad when I say that. If you weren't attached to being broke, you wouldn't be broke. In coaching, one of the things we do when a person is in a state they don't want to be in, what we do is we ask the question, well, what's the payoff? What's the payoff? Coach, I don't want to be broke, but you are. So what's the payoff? What do you mean the payoff? There's nothing good about it. No, there's a payoff. There's a story that you've been telling yourself that provides an emotional payoff to being broke. So you get to be right. You know what I'm afraid most black folk story is? We get to be right about the man doing it to us. We get to be right about racism in the United States. I'm not saying it don't exist. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is your possibility is greater than that. We get to be right about it. She racism. They weren't racist. We get to be right about discrimination and prejudice. We get to be like, that's the payoff. Then we get to be the payoff is I'm a victim. I'm a matter of fact. Oh, I'm a matter of fact. And that's why week after week, Yeah, I'm saying it. Week after week, the flown lines for WVON buzz with complaints. Ah, we should do this. I can't believe they did that. But what are you doing about it? Maybe, just maybe, if as a community we focused in on our purpose, there'd be nothing to complain about. Brothers and sisters would be living to their potential and doing what they're supposed to do. Which means that we would have all the support we need right here among ourselves. But see, there's a payoff. There's an emotional payoff. You get to be right about your story. You get to be right about your attachments. This is how we fool ourselves. Hey, my inspired people. Linnell Harris here, certified ontological coach and trainer. I'm so excited that you're watching the channel. 
By the way, did you know you can catch the show live at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every Sunday morning? You can. All you have to do is go to my Facebook stream, Coach Linnell Harris, catch the stream live, or you can listen to the radio show via iHeart at WVON 1690 AM. But since you're here, if you love the content, I ask that you share it, like this particular video, and subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having a great day.